Hey everyone, finally the long overdue look at my uh, long range setup. This is what I've been flying for most of my videos. A 7 inch frame that I designed myself and had cut at CNC Madness. I'm always using Dowell 7040 props. The Whenever I get HQ props, they never look straight. The, whenever I eyeball the three blades and, and spin it, it's there's always none of them line up <laughs> and uh, I don't have to bend all my big blades straight right after I've bought them so these are way more consistently nice uh, let's start with the FPV camera up front I just stuck it out the front instead of back inside the frame just to get the props out of view a little bit more so I could see more of the view and less of the props Put a little bumper in front of it in case I happen to hit something and I'm close by to myself, but I just do my best to never crash because if I hit something and I'm far out, I'm just going to lose the quad. I'm using the ESC from the Diatone MK2 stack, the 40 amp ESC. So that's a really budget part. The uh, flight controller is too, is, it's a DYS F4 Pro V2, which is a few years old. It's got a thousand microfarad 50 volt capacitor. Uh, the, this camera is a Runcam Phoenix V2. I used to be using a, the Micro Eagle, but mine started uh, getting glitchy, so I changed to the Phoenix V2. The VTX is a Rush Tank Ultimate Plus that I always run at 800 milliwatts. Connected to a TrueRC Singularity. Uh, it's got a Brain FPV GPS mounted in the back here. It's just covered up with tape. The GoPro is not in the mount because it's recording this right now. But uh, one of the things about the frame I was trying to do is keep it really tight and small so I didn't take up too much space. And uh, so the props actually go in underneath the GoPro mount on this one. The control link is Crossfire, of course. I've got a diversity receiver mounted underneath. I'm not sure if that helps or not, but it definitely couldn't hurt having it on the opposite side of the carbon. It may at least help keep some interference from going between parts. Uh, so it's a diversity receiver. I've got a horizontal Immortal T out front mounted far away from any of the carbon. And a vertical barred pole, true RC barred pole in the back. Uh, for the radio, I'm using a Tranis X9D Plus with the Micro TX for Crossfire. I did change to using the uh, TBS Diamond antenna. I, I usually just keep this horizontally polarized because it fits in my case like that and then I don't have to keep undoing and changing the uh, you know wearing out the the SMA coupling here but if I'm flying three or four kilometers out or more and starting to get RSSI alarms then I'll just change this to vertical polarization and it takes care of everything at back to 99 RSI again uh, let's take a look at the batteries here so I've been using my own success lithium ion packs. I made them myself out of uh, Moly Cell P26A 18650 cells. I might do a video about uh, making a battery. Uh, so I've been running two of these in parallel. that they can uh, take the amperage from the motors a little better since it gets split between the two packs. Uh, they're just connected in parallel with two pigtails soldered up to the same spot on the ESC. Oh, and of course I've been forgetting the motors. Uh, Brother Hobby 2806.5, 1300 kV. Now there's 
something that works out just right between the motors and the battery packs that these the battery sags enough that the motors don't end up drawing too many amps uh, i'm not sure if it may be something to do with the uh, budget esc limiting current flow or something because other people i've i've talked to have been getting much higher amp ratings with uh, these motors on 6s but i have actually tried last week running this thing on two 6s uh, lipos and the amps were exactly the same as with my lithium ion packs so i'm wondering if maybe it's the esc that's limiting my amps the way it is because they never seem to go over about 45 maximum with a full battery and full throttle All right, I guess let will take a look at the goggles next year. I'm using Orca FPV ones. I've been really happy with them. They've they've worked great. The only issue I've had it has been the power cord here out of the battery failing with a getting frayed in the middle. So I replaced it myself. And other than that, they've been really great goggles. Uh, that's the antenna setup I'm using now. Uh, a few months ago, I was just using two of these homemade helical antennas. But now I've switched to using one of the X2 Airs, which is better than the Helicals. But uh, the Helicals were really cheap. I think it cost me about five bucks or something to make one of them. And the X2 Air is uh, $60 US. So I think I might also do a video soon about uh, how to make these Helical antennas. There's been quite a bit of questions and interest about that. For flying long range, I always use two high gain antennas and point them both in the same direction. I believe that's supposed to be the best way to make use of the rapid fire mode one uh, feature where it takes the best picture outputs from both antennas and then combines them to give you the, the best picture possible. I'm going to be working on a, uh, well I am working on a, a new frame for this year. It's Kind of similar to this one, the arms are stretched out a little more and the the top plate's longer to hold a larger battery like like this one that I got for the FR7 doesn't fit on doesn't fit on my original frame. But it was kind of made for specifically to fit these, but this one I'm just trying to make a little more versatile so it'll be able to fit a battery this size and uh it may be able to fit two 18650 packs stacked like that. I'm planning on using different uh, different electronics for this one. I'm going to use the Sussex DF7 Twin G and a 50 amp BL Heli 32 ESC. And I'm going to try running this one on 4S, see if I can get a little more efficiency out of it. And uh, slightly smaller motors using the Brother Hobby 2507. Uh, I'm going to be trying 1750 kV for 4S. I'm also going to just temporarily move these motors over from here onto this one just to see what the amp draw comparison is like with the new uh, with the new stack compared to this stack and if I'm curious if the ESC is what's limiting the amp draw from these motors because they should be able to draw way more than 45 amps with these. For the 4S batteries on this new frame I'm going to be making them out of uh, different cells than the other ones. These are still moly cell, but they're P42As, so they're 21700 cells. They're a little bit bigger than the 18650 cells. A little bigger, a little heavier. So I'm going to see how uh, two 4S packs of this works. It works out to being about the same, slightly more watt hours using two 4S packs of these than two 6S packs of these. 
So it'll be interesting to see how the uh, efficiency comparison works between them. It's going to be a lot of work making all these batteries. I'll probably do a, I'll probably do a video about that. Oh, I also got some uh, VTC6, the Sony Murata uh, 3000 milliamp hour batteries. I just got four of these so I can make a pack for my uh, Flywoo Explorer. <laughs>